Hello everybody, this is Freddy with Freddy Can Fly and in today's video we are going over the ESC 101, everything you need to know about electronic speed controllers. Now please take in mind for this particular video, it is geared towards the helicopter platform. I know there are different variables when it comes to things like cars and boats and trains and, and gliders and all that stuff. Um, but since I'm a heli guy, that's what we're talking about. Now, starting out for me as a pilot, of course, I would always just get an ESC that usually came in a combo kit. I understood that it went in between the battery and the motor to make the motor work, and I kind of left it there. I didn't really take too much time to look into it. But I do feel like it's really important to understand your components and not necessarily just buy them because a friend recommended it or it came in your kit because it's important to understand them. That way you know how to troubleshoot them and how to properly set them up. So we'll go over the basics. Now for me, uh, with an electronic speed controller, that's the acronym for ESC. Um, essentially, that, that's what it does, right? It allows you to control the, the different speeds of the brushless motor. Um, they come in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, different um, amperages and voltages, etc. So hopefully I can help you guys explain which ones to select. Now for this demonstration, I'm using the Hobbywing Platinum. This is a 200 amp ESC. This is usually for a 700 and up class machine. Probably could be used on a 600 class, but it might be a little overkill. Now, to, uh, the, the way I look at my ESCs, or the way that I understand them the best, is I, I look at them as coming in four different stages. Okay, we're going to look at um, stage one and two make up the essentials of the ESC. Um, stage three and four are usually additionals, add-ons, or selectable options. So let's start with the basics here. Now, guys, please take in mind, full disclosure, I'm not a scientist, and I am not an electronic, uh, electronical engineer. So some of the terms that I may use, I'm using because they're known within the RC world, um, if they're not 100% accurate or incorrect, feel free to, to, to correct me in any comments down below. But also try not to be too harsh, right? We're just trying to learn some stuff. So for a beginner, for someone who's looking for knowledge, or even advanced pilots, because I've been flying for many years, and I honestly have not been studying ESCs until just recently, and I've learned a lot of really cool stuff. So we've got our ESC here. Now, essentially, the purpose of the ESC, electronic speed controller, is going to be uh, to allow us to control the variable speeds of a high-end brushless motor. So, a couple of things we need to know. Let's look at stage one. Uh, let's 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 picture our ESC as being like a building, right? Floor one, floor two, floor three, etc. Right. So we're on floor one, stage one. It's going to be the input source of the electronic speed controller. The input source would be our battery pack, a light polymer battery pack. Um, depending upon your ESC and your make and model, you'll have different cells, of course. Um, but let's let's not get into that for now. Let's just say we've got our power. Now, a light polymer battery pack is going to be what's known as a DC current uh, or direct current, right? So essentially what that means is you plug it in, you get the power that's supplied, end of conversation, right? Direct current. Well, the problem that you have with these high-end uh, brushless motors, in this case I'm, I'm looking at a Scorpion, um, is the way that they work internally is it takes, you'll notice you've got the three wires usually that come off of your motors. Well, electricity goes into each one of these at different timing points as the outer case, or in some cases the inner case, um, rotates around the, the strator inside, um, or stator, however that's pronounced. And we can't do that with direct current. So if I were to directly plug my battery into this motor, it's probably just going to go, it, it's, it can't spin. There's no timing. There's no sequence. So what they classify this as, um, for, for the brushless motor, it uses what's known as AC current, which is alternating current. So the current is going to alternate between these three different um, lines simultaneously to create that magnetic pole to turn the motor. So... Now we've got that problem solved because the ESC goes in between the DC power supply. That's going to run into stage one. It's going to convert that DC power into AC power. So we're going from direct current, converting it into alternating current. So that right there is stage one as to why the ESC is crucial to 
um, the helicopter itself working. Um, now, now that that's been done, right, we can go from direct current, convert it, into alternating current. Well, now the motor just is going to spin at full power. There's nothing we can really do to adjust it or, or fine tune it or anything. So in this case, we would enter into stage two. And this would be what I would consider the actual electronic speed controller per, uh, portion. Um, stage one is, is converting power. Stage two is controlling the power. So in order to do that, um, ESCs are going to be equipped, of course, with a signal wire. Now this signal wire, what it would do is it would go into a command source. Uh, most people would consider this to be a receiver, um, a variable voltage switch, or uh, in most cases we'll say a fly barless control system. So let's say I take my, my signal lead and I can I put that in. Now of course take in mind there's, there's satellites and stuff involved, we don't got to worry about that. So now that we're on stage two and we've got our signal lead, which of course this is going to be picking up from our transmitter which allows us to do all of our selectable programming. Fly barless systems allow you to set certain parameters for the motor within the programming. But the purpose of that is, stage one, we're converting DC to AC, motor can spin. Stage two is we're now gonna receive a signal that tells that conversion how fast, how slow, how much, how much to take away. Now we can control the, the, the variable speed of the alternating current motor, right? So that's stage two. Stage two is going to be control. Stage one is going to be conversion. Um, DC to AC, stage two, we now have control. Now, stage three is what I consider to be an optional platform because there are ESCs out there that either, that either have this feature or do not. Uh, you'll hear the term BEC. That's going to stand for a battery eliminator circuit. So we're on floor three here, stage three. We have a choice. We can either A, power our uh, control unit by a separate battery supply. If that is the case, our ESC will not have an internal battery eliminator circuit. Um, basically meaning I have another battery sitting over here. I plug that in to get power. Now that I have power here, I can translate my signal here. That way my DC can translate and convert into AC, right? Well, most ESCs on the market today do come equipped with stage three, which is gonna be the battery eliminator circuit. What this means now is it's getting more complex. Down on stage one, we've got our DC current being converted through here into an AC alternating current. Well, up here now on stage three, we've got our BEC. It's going to take current from our DC power supply. And although this is being converted into alternating current over here, with our battery eliminator circuit, it's going to draw power from here as well, but it's going to remain direct current, DC. So now you've got a split, so to speak. Um, floor or uh, Stage one goes from DC to AC. But uh, stage three is going to go from DC to DC. So we're getting direct current that's now traveling here, going up the stairs to, to floor three, and then it's walking its way out here to our control system. Now with a battery eliminator circuit on board of the electronic speed controller, there is no longer a need for an external battery pack. Everything will be ran off of the main power supply. Okay, so... Just as a quick recap on that, uh, stage one is going to take direct current. It's going to translate it down into an alternating current, giving our motor the ability to spin. Stage two is going to be our signal. So from our control unit, we can now control the speed of the motor, or how fast or how slow. Take in mind, most ESCs do have pretty large capacitors on it, and essentially what the capacitor is going to do is as you're translating or converting, if you will, the DC to AC, there can be some, some skips or some high and lows that can um, cause you know, less than desired smooth operation. So the capacitors, which these ones have them internal, but most ESCs you'll see those two big capacitors sticking out. What those do is they store up the energy so that when those, those highs and lows happen, it has that energy to, to push out. 
so that you don't get any interruptions in between the timing sequences. So you're always going to get a nice smooth operation. Okay, so that's going to be on stage two. Jumping up a floor to stage three, we've got our DC current, but this time it's went up to stage three and it's coming out our, um, our power end here to our control box. Now because of this, everything is now powered off of our main pack here. What that means is we can then take, uh, let's say, a servo. And of course, on, on our machines, we have, we have multiple, no, multiple servos. But let's say we plug one of these bad boys in here. Okay. And so now, on stage three, we've got our DC power coming into the, the, the building, right? The ESC, going up to floor number three and then walking out to the control system, the balcony, if you will, right? And now that this has full power, I can then take the power that's that's being distributed here and distribute it outwards as well. So to our servos, um, any other external devices. Uh, again, not all models have the BEC. If they do not, you just need a separate pack that'll plug into your control system. If not, we're running off the main pack. Now, stage four, Again, not all ESCs are equipped with this, but it is something that I highly recommend you have. There are external options um, that, that you can get, but that's gonna be a governor. Now essentially, since we have the ability to convert DC direct current to AC, alternating current as a baseline, we now have a signal that allows us to control the variable speed of the motor and we have a BEC, battery eliminator circuit on board, giving us power to distribute to all of our servos. The only thing left is to have the ability to maintain a consistent and desirable speed on the motor without stressing or overloading the ESC. Now that's going to be um, a governor or a GOV as, as they like to use the acronym for. Now a governor, if it's not present, if stage four or floor number four doesn't exist on your building, they do sell external governors, again, which some flat barless systems have a, a plug-in that, that does a magnetic sensor, um, wh whatever the case may be. In my case, I have one. So that's going to allow me to do is from my control box, which is being powered from the BEC inside of here, which is coming from this pack, right? Um, I've got everything set up and moving, but as I'm, as I'm converting the DC to AC and I'm receiving the signal line, there can be points where when this is actually in operation, they have what they call motor load. Um, a helicopter term would be rotor disc load. And what that means is there's actually stress against the motor trying to slow it down. When that happens, it can cause overheating, um, potential failures, things of that nature, because when this has resistance, this now has resistance, this has resistance, this has resistance. Everything starts to resist itself. That causes uh, um, a, a bad system, right? So the governor feature, what it's going to allow you to do is within the conversion of, of DC to AC, so floors one, two, and three actually are going to all be affected by the governor. And that's going to allow me to program in... Um, uh, an exact set of sequences, if you will, that tell this motor how fast and how slow it cannot go at any given point in time based on the signals that it's receiving from my transmitter or my toggle switches. So um, let's, let's try to put that into a translation. If I want this motor to spin at 1,000 RPMs, revolutions per minute, um, I would tell my governor, stage 4, that I want it to spin at 1,000 revolutions per minute. Now, when this motor goes into action and it has motor load, or in helicopter terms, rotor disc load, what it's going to do is the motor is going to it's going to get resistant and it's going to want to drop below 1,000 RPMs because of that resistance. So what happens when it does that is the governor will sense that um, through the uh, you know alternating alternating current uh, communication, if you will, and it's going to increase or decrease as appropriately um, the amount of power to the motor to keep it consistent at 1000 RPMs at all times or 1500 or 2000 whatever it is that we're flying at. So what that's going to then do it's going to eliminate the stress 
and the load to where you have a better running motor, better running and cooler ESC, uh, you know, no over voltage spikes on, on here due to the BEC going out or anything, and happier running power plant or DC supply. So um, that's basically all you guys really need to know about the electronic speed controller platform. Uh, I hope this metaphor that I use for the four stages or the, or the, the four-story building um, is appropriate. Again, if I'm missing anything or there's any information that, that I may be getting wrong or kind of 50-50 on, please feel free to correct me down below in the comments. I've been researching ESCs for a while. I've talked to a lot of guys, and this is kind of what I sat down and came up with to be able to translate it. So for you beginners out there, as far as your ESC is concerned, these are the features you want to look for. I highly recommend having all four stages available. Um, you know, you could live without the governor. You just got to really understand how to program and fine tune your model um, through things like throttle curves and whatnot. The BEC is not a must have. Just know your, your machine's going to have other power supplies on it. Nitro helicopters are, are pretty uh, common where you have a separate BEC, of course, because you have a motor instead of a, a, a brushless motor. So, uh, one last real quick guys, um, again thank you so much for watching, um, I hope this video was, was helpful, again ESC 101, hopefully this is everything that you need to know, uh, thank you guys so much for watching, please feel free to comment and subscribe, remember my heli friends, if Freddy can fly, so can you. Mm -hmm.